Samsung now has two premium phones to choose from, the Galaxy S21 Ultra and the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. Released within six months of each other, they both share some similar features, including excellent cameras and S Pen support. But choosing between the two is not as simple as deciding based on price alone, because they're actually kind of similar when you look at the outright cost. So in this video, I'm gonna compare everything from the design, performance, battery life, cameras, screen quality, and of course, the S Pen. So there are chapters also included for your viewing pleasure down in the description below. All that said, let's get started. Now these two phones not only look different from the outside, but they also were designed for slightly different purposes. The Note has traditionally been Samsung's line for productivity, whereas the Galaxy S line has traditionally been the flagship line. And because of that, they do have some stylistic differences to talk about. The first is the physical design in terms of the squared off edges on the Note 20 Ultra and more rounded edges on the S21 Ultra. Now both of these phones are pretty hefty. I definitely feel like I need to do some weight training to use these one-handed. Not just kidding, I'm actually not that weak. But in terms of how they feel one-handed to use, I actually think that the Galaxy S21 Ultra, the weight is distributed a little bit better for my hand and using it with one hand, just because that camera module is balanced better than the kind of domino style on the Note 20 Ultra, which is a little bit more top heavy. Now let's talk about screens. They both share a dynamic AMOLED display, although slightly different in size. The Note 20 Ultra is just a touch bigger at 6.9 inches, whereas the S21 Ultra is 6.8 inches. They both have that Infinity O display with that cutout for the selfie camera at the top. And of course, they both have 120 hertz refresh rate. It is adaptive on both of them. So it's dynamically changing depending on what you're doing. Now there is a little bit of a difference when we are talking about using 120 hertz on both of them. So yes, they both have the adaptive refresh rate, but in terms of the maximum resolution that you get when you are using 120 hertz, you actually get the highest WQHD plus resolution on the S21 Ultra at 120 Hertz. Whereas if you're using 120 on the Note 20 Ultra, you are only able to get full HD plus resolution. So that's something to keep in mind. These phones also both have an in-screen fingerprint reader. Now the S21 Ultra, as you would expect, uses a slightly newer technology. The Qualcomm ultrasonic fingerprint reader is a little bit larger and supposedly uh, a little faster. I don't know if I can actually say scientifically, if it's faster, definitely anecdotally in my testing, it feels perhaps a fraction of a hair faster, or maybe that's just the new shiny phone feeling. But uh, overall, it works effectively on both. I say it's a little bit more accurate in terms of less fails on the S21 Ultra. How about that? Now let's talk about the glass. Now both of these phones have a glass on the front and the back, which is Gorilla Glass Victus, which is Gorilla Glass's latest and strongest glass. Side note, we have done a drop test on both of these phones. And uh, let me just give you the bad news. You're gonna have to put a case on one of these phones, whichever one you get, both of them actually, because glass will break. And the IP rating of both of these is IP68, which means that they are water and dust resistant. Um, but again, be careful because none of this is covered under warranty if uh, you hurt your phone in the swimming pool. And finally, colors. The S21 Ultra is back in black, baby. I think that I'm, okay, so I'm not a color person. I don't get obsessed about what color, what finish a phone comes in. Except when it comes to this phone, I don't know, there's some alchemy about that matte black finish. It just looks fantastic. And honestly, film photos don't do it justice. It looks great. Nothing against the rose gold or the mystic bronze of the Note 20 Ultra. There are other colors, of course, on both of the phones, but I'm kind of focusing on their flagship colors. It just feels a little bit 2020. Now this is the first generation of Galaxy S phones that offer support for the S Pen and that might make you feel a little bit panicked if you are a fan of the Note series. I know that I definitely 
love the Note series, so I was a little bit concerned going into using the S Pen with the Galaxy S21 Ultra. But the functionality is actually slightly different. So what you need to know is that there is Bluetooth support for the S Pen and of course the integrated S Pen into the actual phone body on the Note 20 Ultra and the S Pen is compatible with the S21 Ultra. However, it is not Bluetooth compatible. So that means you lose out on certain functionalities such as if you leave the S Pen behind and walk away with your phone, you don't get a notification that you've left it behind, which is kind of sad. You, you get that on the Note 20 Ultra. That being said, there is going to be an S Pen Pro that does have Bluetooth support coming out later in the year. The things that they share, you can take notes, you can annotate screenshots, you can translate text that you've scribbled into words and convert that or align your handwriting, for example. But what you can do on the Note 20 Ultra as well are air actions and air gestures. So you can use the S Pen to do things like swipe back and forth between pages or apps, songs, tracks, open the selfie camera, switch to the main rear camera and use it as a remote shutter, which is kind of nice. But to be fair, I really didn't feel like I missed out on any of those actions when I went to the S21 Ultra because most of the time when I was using those air actions on the Note 20 Ultra, I just felt like a really bad, mad conductor. But one thing that might sway your decision to choose the Note instead of the S21 Ultra, if you are thinking about S Pen support, is latency. Now, the Note 20 Ultra has a latency of nine milliseconds when using the S Pen. We don't know what it is on the S21 Ultra, but assuming it's not gonna be as fast as the Note 20 Ultra. That said, I did some side-by-side -side tests of doing scribbling and I really didn't notice that much of a difference. Maybe my brain is super slow, but I really couldn't tell much of a difference. I would say if you were an artist or someone who likes to do a lot of precise drawing, the Note 20 Ultra probably feels a little bit more precise, but for most people, myself included, the S21 Ultra was perfect. Let's talk about the camera and the hardware and image processing because there's actually a bit of a significant difference here. Now, both of them share an ultra wide, a regular wide angle camera at 108 megapixels and a telephoto camera, which is five times on the Note 20 Ultra and three times and 10 times on the S21 Ultra. And let me tell you, if you like to zoom, you know, we all like to be able to use camera zoom, right? The S21 Ultra is going to be your best bet. Now I did a couple of different comparisons at different focal lengths to show you just how close you can get with each camera. Now at the, I guess, five times optical zoom range, it's obvious that the Note 20 Ultra looks better compared to the hybrid zoom that is on the S21 Ultra at five times. But if you want the most flexibility at three and 10 and then beyond, the S21 Ultra does look better. Now I'll show you a photo comparison at the regular one times or just on the wide angle camera and then at 50 times, which is the maximum that the Note 20 Ultra can go to and half of the maximum that the S21 Ultra can go to. And you'll see the difference is pretty clear. The S21 Ultra definitely has much more definition, captures more detail at that extreme length than the Note 20 Ultra. Now, that being said, I would not go any further than 50 times with this. Yeah, you can go to 100 times, but it looks pretty bad. I would avoid it at all costs. For regular shots taken at 12 megapixels, I honestly think both of the phones do an excellent job in good lighting conditions. It's really hard to tell the difference between the two. I mean, sure, you could probably pick it a little bit apart in terms of like contrast and color saturation, for example, but overall, they both look really good. And that's thanks to pixel binning technology, which is taking all that data from the big 108 megapixel sensor and consolidating it into a much more manageable 12 megapixel file. While both have that 108 megapixel sensor, the S21 Ultra does seem to have better focus. And I do prefer how it renders the shallow depth of field compared to the Note. For night mode photos, the S21 is generally a lot sharper, especially if you look at photos at full magnification. But the processing really ups the sharpness and the saturation compared to the same shot on the Note. I'm not really a selfie kind of gal, but I will tell you that the selfie cameras 
are fairly similar in performance, except for the fact that the S21 Ultra has a 40 megapixel sensor, but that's not really what I care about. I care about the accuracy of the color rendition. And finally, Samsung has given us a normal and a bright setting. As for video performance, well, I think that they both do a really good job. Although I can see some improvements when shooting at 4K60, which is my preferred resolution to shoot at on the S21 Ultra. It just looks a little bit cleaner in terms of the image overall. The stabilization also looks to be improved for me. And I think the dynamic range is just a little bit better on the newer phone, which is not a surprise. They can both shoot at 8K at 24 frames a second if you want. We do have some 8K samples available for you on our CNET's highlights channel, um, although this video is rendered in 4K, so you will not see 8K right here, but definitely click out and go check out those samples for yourself. Battery and processor. Now, as you would expect, the newer phone has the latest Snapdragon 888 processor or Exynos 2100, depending on where you are in the world, whereas the Note 20 Ultra has the Snapdragon 865 Plus or the Exynos 990. Now, I can't comment on the performance of the Exynos versions as I only have been using the Snapdragon phones. Now, to me, the real test of performance is real world testing rather than showing you the benchmarks. So I have done a lot of different things in my testing, including playing games, shooting and editing a lot of 4K and 8K video, as well as regular day-to-day -day tasks. And really, honestly, there's nothing that I could have thrown at these phones that they weren't able to cope with. The only thing is I did anecdotally notice that the S21 Ultra was a little faster when it came to doing some really resource intensive stuff like cutting down an 8K video, for example, it was just a little bit faster on the S21 Ultra. Now, both of the phones are 5G, as you would expect, given they have 5G in their official names, which I'm not gonna say all the time. Battery life is also going to vary between the two. Now, yes, the S21 Ultra has a larger capacity battery, 5,000 milliampere hour batteries compared to 4,500 on the Note 20 Ultra. Now, bigger is not always better, as some people might tell you, because it does come down to performance and how you use the phone and what settings that you have that also plays a huge part in battery life and overall performance. Now, I will say that both of these phones 100% will get me through the day with juice to spare. I generally think that the standby time though on the Note 20 Ultra is a little bit better than that on the S21 Ultra. And I'll tell you why, when I have a new phone, I'm sorry, I'm going all out. I'm going large or I'm going home because I use everything I can. I'm shooting 4K video, 8K video. I'm using the WQHD Plus screen. I'm using 120 Hertz refresh rate. You ain't gonna make me go to 60. So that's why the standby time and overall battery life for me on the S21 Ultra with all of those features maxed out is not as much as the equivalent. If you are a numbers person and do like the specific amounts, you can go to our full review on cnet.com and you can find the full results of our battery tests on both of these two phones. When it comes to wireless charging, of course, they are both wirelessly charged enabled and they also wired charge through USB-C at 25 watts. However, there is no charger in the box for the S21 Ultra whereas there is on the Note 20 Ultra. So many points to the Note 20 Ultra because again, I spent a lot of money on this phone and now I have to buy another charger. I mean, I probably have one in the house, but I think I want another one. Now the base storage on both of these is 128 gigabytes, but by now you are also probably aware that as well as uh, not having a charger, the S21 Ultra does not have micro SD expandable storage, the Note 20 Ultra does that to a maximum of one terabyte. Come on, Samsung, like I am shooting 8K videos because my crazy future self has come back in time to tell me that I now have an 8K television and I should have been filming all my memories in 8K. So 128 gigabytes ain't really gonna do it for me. Fortunately, there are two other storage tiers of 256 and 512, although that of course ups the cost RAM as well is different on the highest model. Now, 12 gigabytes is what you'll get on the Note 20 Ultra on all models and storage capacities. So that's 128 and 512. 
and you are also going to be able to get 16 gigabytes of RAM if you choose the highest spec S21 Ultra, the 512 gigabyte model. Still not enough storage for me. Just, I'm done. Now, if you use Samsung Pay, you will know that one of the flagship features of Samsung Pay is MST or Magnetic Secure Transmission Technology, which means that you can use your phone, pretty much any terminal, even if it doesn't have NFC. I was probably one of the five people in the world that loved to use MST and see the look on people's faces when I held it up to a terminal that wasn't NFC enabled and they were like, no, 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 this doesn't take Apple Pay, Samsung Pay, Google Pay. And I'm like, no, 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 it really does. Watch this, ding, and it works. So I'm sad that the S21 Ultra lost that feature. The Note 20 Ultra though does have that feature. So something to bear in mind if you are a big Samsung Pay user. Now time to decide which phone is the right one for you. Now, obviously, this is always a decision that comes down to what is your use case for the phone? What do you use more? Not necessarily price as we discussed, unless the price of this phone comes down significantly over the next few months, which it may very well do. Now, if you like to use the S Pen, then I would suggest that the Note 20 Ultra is the better buy until we get the S Pen Pro on the S21 Ultra later in the year. And that is just because it feels a little bit more precise and obviously you have that Bluetooth connectivity, which may be very useful in many situations. But for most other applications, I actually think this time, which is probably a first for me because most times when I do a comparison between an older phone versus a newer phone, I often find that the older phone is much better. But in this case, I actually think the S21 Ultra is the better all around package and definitely worth the money, especially if you are considering the choice between a Note or an S21 Ultra, thanks to the camera technology, the screen, the adaptive refresh rate, I also really just like how this feels in the hand. It feels much more balanced and much more usable. And I also have the flexibility of S Pen support if I want that. But you know, the fact that I don't have MST, I am still on about that and I'm still mad, but I guess I'm just gonna have to start shopping at places that only accept NFC. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this has been helpful for you in working out the differences between these two phones and which one might be the best for your particular application. If you have any other questions for me, please leave me a note in the comments. If you wanna sound off about MST, maybe micro SD storage, let me know. If there's any other questions that you have, just ping me down below. Follow me on social media, every single platform you can imagine, at Lexi Savides. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. MST for Life Club, where you at? It's me, MST. Okay.